Hey guys, Steven here back with another video and today I'm going to teach you how you can do sky replacements in Adobe Photoshop using their new update. All you have to do is literally click one button. So I think it's a great thing that they've introduced this as I've seen a lot of tutorials on YouTube on how to do this, but a lot of them require you to do a lot of masking. Generally, it takes a lot of time to do this. So I'm happy that they've used their AI technology, Adobe Sensei, to help with this. If you guys enjoy this video, make sure to hit the thumbs up button and also check out the different tutorials I've made on the updates that were announced at Adobe Summit recently. And yeah, with that being said, let's just get straight into the video. So right here, we're in Photoshop. Make sure to update your Photoshop to Adobe Photoshop 2021 in order to have this feature. I have three different images. I chose them for different reasons. This one's in the daytime. This is gonna be the easiest one to work with just because it's such a plain background. The second one um, is way more complex. I assume they're not gonna get this right. If they do, I'd be super impressed because you know there's the sky, there's a bunch of different elements in this photo, like a mountain. I wonder if they're just gonna add the sky to the mountain or if they're gonna actually detect that there's a mountain here. And the third one is also a clear background, except there's like pole lights and it's in the nighttime. So I wonder how this will look like if their AI is gonna detect that there's, you know, pole lights and all that. So I'm gonna work with the first one because it's gonna be the easiest. You want to go to edit, sky replacement, that's it. So a few things here, you can choose the type of sky you want. So they have three different categories, blue skies, which is for the daytime, specular which is more for the flashy stuff like you know super pink clouds or a rainbow more dramatic stuff and then sunsets i don't see one for uh, nighttime besides this preset right here um so i wonder if they're gonna add them in the future you can also add your own right here just click the button i would recommend checking out a site like unsplash.com where there's free royalty free images you can use unsplash is actually where this image is from so right here you can see they've um added the sky I'm gonna select this preset here because it, it's a little bit more dynamic um, and you guys can see how it looks like. So for the shift edge and fade edge, basically it helps blend in the image. So you can see um, you decrease the fade edge, the bottom of this sky gets darker. The more you increase it, the brighter it gets. So shift edge, you can see it fades in. So this is helpful if there's a light source like this and it makes it a little bit more realistic because if I decrease the fade edge, and it's just super bright, like there's light coming out of this image. Where the light source is, there's no light. It doesn't really make sense. So increasing the fade edge in this instance would make a lot of sense. So if you click on an image like this, this is completely different because of the sky and all that sort of stuff. You can see the colors don't match. Like the sky is pink, but the sunset is orange. You know, probably wouldn't be the best bet to use this sky, but you can adjust the temperature which doesn't really adjust anything or make anything that much better because they're still pink. You can also adjust the scale of the image. I think this is a perfect size, but depending on the image you're using, you might wanna scale it up or down. This looks pretty uh, realistic in my eyes. You can also adjust the foreground adjustments. So most of these adjustments you see are being applied to the foreground. So where the mask ends or where the sky starts and the sky. So whenever you adjust the shift edge, or you adjust the lighting adjustment, it'll most likely be applied to sort of the skyline. And once you actually apply the effect, you can see the mask, you can see what they apply, you can hide them. So in an instance like this, um, the only thing I would adjust is the temperature and I'd use color balance and I'd make it just more yellow. So something like this. So if I just group these and hide it, you can see the big difference it makes. It looks, it actually looks quite good. So um, this was what I was expecting from an image like this, super basic. Now we're gonna go to this image, which is way more complex. And to my surprise, they've actually detected it quite well. The only thing is this image is probably not the right one to use because it's like a sunset nighttime type of vibe. So you would wanna choose a blue sky for this. So something like this. I would actually scale this down. You can see the skies are a little bit chunky and they're a little bit too big. So I'm actually gonna add a rainbow. And obviously the rainbow should not be this big. So I'm gonna decrease the scale. But once you decrease the scale, um, the stock image they use doesn't really work with this because I can't really make it smaller. So I'm gonna use this one. Um, I wanna make it brighter because right now it just, it seems dark, you know what I mean? 
So to wear the foreground, I need to make it way brighter. So I think this is actually quite good, a lot better than I thought. Um, it's actually quite impressive. So I'm gonna group this and I'm gonna hide it. So you can see what it did. It also keeps the background that was existing sort of there, I guess to sort of blend them together so it looks a little bit realistic. Now that I'm thinking about it, this one might not work just because it's nighttime. I'm actually gonna go on unsplash.com and search up stars. And I'm gonna try to add like a Milky Way, something like this, and hopefully it does wonders. Um, I'd be very surprised. So once again, Adobe impresses. I don't even know how they did that. You can see they matched out that pole light perfectly. Everything about this is crazy. But I'm gonna go and continue to add my own image. Uh, and I think based off what it's showing me here, you can actually import it so that it stays as like a preset. So you can see it shows up here. So obviously this isn't realistic, but this is actually what most people use it for. I'm gonna make it a little bit cooler. Darken it a little bit. And you can shift the edge. So I think shifting the edge actually blends in the two images a little bit. But what this causes in a nighttime image, especially, is you can see there's like a glow outside of it. Um, I don't think that looks that good. So I'll, I'll keep it minimal. And yeah, I think that's pretty good. The only thing is it should be blurry. Like it shouldn't be this clear and detailed because it's in the background. So what I'll end up doing is I think for this mask, we're gonna go to blur, Gaussian blur. And I'm also gonna change the color uh, balance to a more green scion color. You can also lower the opacity so it sort of blends together. But overall, I think this is quite impressive. I actually wasn't expecting this at all. The fact that they can determine where the sky is is crazy to me. But yeah, hope you guys enjoy this video and hopefully you guys are able to take something away from this and apply this to your own projects. I'm gonna leave a link to a playlist that has other videos similar to this. But yeah, if you guys wanna join my Discord channel and my Facebook group, it'll be in the pinned comment below. And yeah, my name is Steven and I'll see you in the next one.